Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season five, episode four of The Expanse, and this episode is called Gaugamela, 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 Gog. I don't know what it's called. I don't know how to pronounce it, and I can't research it in advance because spoilers. So we'll just have to go with it as it is, and I'll find out what it's called probably during the episode. Hopefully, someone will say it. Um, but yeah, very, very excited to get into this episode, but we will do a quick recap in advance because I have had the pleasure of re-watching episodes one to three with my wife ahead of this um, and just noticed a couple of things and just kind of sealed my understanding a little bit better going into this. So a quick flash through of where we are. I didn't notice on first watch in season one at the end when Marco is watching the trajectories of the asteroids. Um, I really only took in the final asteroid, the 12 days, 7 hours, 13 minutes, whatever one it was. I wasn't really reading or taking in the stuff before it, um, but on the rewatch I was able to see, oh shit, yeah, there is a series of asteroids that almost, the way that the camera shot happened was you went around from the sort of furthest away from Earth to the closest. So the closest was 12 days away, but the furthest was 15 days away, I think, or at least that's when I noticed, started to notice the text. And it was like four, 15 days, 13 days. Da, da, da. So it's not just the theory that there are more asteroids. We have seen them and we know when they're going to be landing relative to, to the first one. So I wanted to clear that up. Um, good to see it. Also terrifying. Like I really shat myself when, when I saw that this time. I'm like, shit, they're going to get hit once and then there's going to be more. So what we've got to hope is that Nancy Gao turns those damn watchtowers immediately, finds out where the other asteroids are and blows them out of the fucking sky. Obviously, to what degree we're then still going to get detritus hitting the Earth, I don't know. I don't understand. But we have got to do something because this is going to be horrific. Um, really glad about Kamina last episode, having Oksana and the polyam having Oksana and the Polyam Belter fam tight around her so that she doesn't need to grieve by going and getting vengeance. She now has a different way to grieve. She can just be sad, she can be devastated, she can cry and thrash and all, and all of those things because she has people around her now who care about her and love her and I just thought that was the best. She's never had that, we've never seen that and it's... Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I love that whole crew. Really hope we see more of them and that they become a force kind of in their own right as this thing moves forward. I'm here for it. Um, and obviously we had the fulfillment through Kamina of Ashford's mission and his death, which was he used his death to capture that conversation with Marco, which is now via Kamina through Fred Johnson has made it to a Vassarala. Um, so I would say be just before that asteroid hit Earth, a Vassarala knew, and she'd already been laying the groundwork in advance. So I'm hoping now that she curries enough favour on that basis, if just through pragmatism, because a Vassarala has all the information and Nancy Gow is going to need it, that she can leverage herself some sort of position uh, in the response to this. But Given their history, who the fuck knows? And it's politics. Pfft, when has evidence ever been significant in fucking politics? So, what else? Um, obviously, big concern about Amos on the ground. We've also got a Vassarala's family on the ground in Earth. We've got Jim's family on the ground in Earth, on Earth. So, there is real potential fallout for a lot of people from this situation that we know. It's bad enough. If we if, if none of the characters that, that we love are affected by this, it's still fucking horrific. But we actually could, could we could lose named characters in, in this attack. So that that's a, a, an additional concern. We've also got the situation with Naomi, which is just devastating. She's been kidnapped forcefully by um by her own son, Philip who I believe is, is returning to her to his father, which I don't think was the plan with the henchman. I think the plan was to nick the ship, um, but he seemed to have a little moment at the end there where he was like, ah, no, 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 psych, we're actually taking her too. Because the guy, um, henchman, who seems 
actually to to still feel quite a tenderness for Naomi was like what the shit so I don't think that I don't think taking Naomi was originally part of the plan but we'll see then of course we've got Mars Bobby and Alex Alex has now got himself done over in the name of um, Bobby and Avasarala's mission to find out who in Mars is working with the Belchers and supplying them with Martian technology. My money is on Babbage for, for certain, but Salvatore, I don't know yet because re-listening to his speech at the Academy, you could take it one of two ways. You could take it as almost a revolutionary conversation about giving up the old, you know, the dreams of yesterday in favour of a new dream, being pragmatic, responding to circumstances, making new alliances, all of those sorts of things. Or you could take it totally differently and hear it simply in the militaristic terms of the dream of Mars is still alive. The dream now is just different because it's been changed by technology, our environment, what's possible to us. The dream is now not so much about a planet orbiting a single sun, but about a Mars that could expand across galaxies. So why would they need, you know, the belt, I don't, I don't, so it's, it could go either way. So as I say, I'm 50-50 on Salvatore. I'm about 98% sure that Babbage is in, is in this. Um, and we'll, we'll wait to see where that goes. And then of course, we've got Fred Johnson and Jim, who, who are also on a, on a fucking wild goose hunt with Monica, the guys basically who tried to kidnap Monica still think she's in a cargo container in the dock. So their plan is essentially to pull off a sting, to capture these people when they come to collect um, their cargo, which they will believe is Monica, but it's actually going to be Bull and his crew. So we'll see how that pans out. But, you know, at this point, it's starting to look like, wait, is it Marco Inaros actually who's, who's now got fucking Cortazar and the Proto Molecule? Because if it is, then we are really now in a situation which is bad. He's He's managed to attack Earth, what the fuck is he going to do with the proto molecule? And it would make sense politically because Marco is fucking done with um, Anderson Dawes and, and Fred Johnson. From his point of view, they're collaborators. So I, I, cu I could readily believe that, you know, or, or almost how those plot lines come together is that Marco is, you know, he's over here with you know, stealth weaponry, getting all that stealth weaponry from Mars. Marco is working with somebody on, on the Martian side, Babbage, or, or someone more senior to Babbage. And over on the other side, he's he's nicking Cortazar and the proto molecule to make sure he's squared that circle. You know, and obviously then the asteroid at Earth and all of this is Marco is an agent of chaos. That's possible, but we just don't know with the expanse what they're going to do to us next. Um, but this episode, I would I would assume is going to be focusing on on the er, on the situation on Earth, the asteroid that is hit, and the potential oncoming asteroids that we've we've seen um, in Marco's little trajectory room. So, I think that gets us into the episode now. Without further ado, let's have at it. <laughs> Oh, the Ray's about taking off. I fucking love these titles. Let's go. Oh, dude. The Ray's are back. Okay. Wow. How clean are the graphics? I've got to keep saying it, though. The only thing on the bar Keith's current heading is a squadron from the Third Fleet. Maybe they really are on a supply run. No. That's just the cover story. Somewhere along the way, they're going to meet up with a black marketeer and do a deal. I'd put money on it. How are you so fucking nonchalant about all this? She's fucking traumatized. I used to have a rat. And she was so smart. Rats are smart. Yeah. Rats only live a few years. In the wild, it's rare that they die of old age. And when they do, they go out hard. My mum told me she was dying and tried to take her away. But I demanded that I stayed with her until she passed. I sobbed for hours. And then I stopped. And then a few hours after that, I was just tired. No matter how traumatic the loss is, you only have so much emotional stamina. 
even grief can get used up. I went through the exact same thing you're going through right now. And when you come out the other side of this, you're going to want to be doing something that matters. She's amazing. Hey, Marquis and the escort, they're increasing their break and burn. Sorry. Pause. I just got to pause a second. Because when you said that was so beautiful, when you think about where Bobby was last season, that's what she's talking about. Like, last season is where she was finding all of this shit out and grieving and depressed and drinking and fighting and all this shit that she went through and the disbelief and how could this be happening to Mars? So she's now watching Alex actually go through that same pain curl she is, but she's able to give him like a little glimpse beyond it. Of like, there is something past this. You are gonna feel shit, but then eventually you will stop feeling shit because there's just, you can't feel any more shit about it. And we are really gonna need something practical to do that's helpful, something that means something. It's just, oh, I fucking love Bobby, man. That was amazing. Play. The hell? What is it? Emergency flight restrictions from the UN. Oh. All ships headed for Earth are advised <gasps> to expect delays as UN traffic control clears patterns for vessels involved in emergency relief oh, efforts. Oh shit. Oh it's shit. All the details of the impact, but estimates put the blast between 200 and 300 kilotons. There's been no explanation from the UN as to why their orbital spotter network did not detect the asteroid. It is unclear whether this is related to today's explosion on the Martian Parliament, which happened what? almost simultaneously. We will continue to update you as we learn more about this tragic event on Earth. Ah, oh, fuck me. So am I understanding it right? Martian Parliament just got attacked on the same day. Oh, yes! UN Penitentiary, Chesapeake, okay. Erin Wright? Is Amos gonna see Erin Wright? No. Authorities are still assessing the extent. Oh, God, tsunami. Oh, shit. Where did it hit? Amos Burton. That's me. All personal effects wow. inside the prison are subject to reduced civil rights. As outlined in the amended Lucerne Code, would you like a copy oh, of the code hey. to review? I'm good. I need a yes or a no, sir. No. Any guard, corrections officer, or prison employee is authorized to use any means necessary to ensure your safety and the safety of others. Do you understand and consent to these conditions? Sure. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the pit. You got friends in high places. All right, Konachek, you know the drill. All right. Don't be nervous. No, I'm not. The fuck? The fuck? Oh! Oh my god! Melba! Clarissa! Hey, Beaches. Fuck, that took me a minute. I heard you were on another world. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, till everybody started shooting each other. Parasites began eating our eyeballs. Giant alien machines came out of the ground and exploded. <laughs> it must look like shit. Yeah. Yep. It's the blockers from my mod. Breathe in. Breathe out. Eat. Shit. Sleep. Take what they give. Give nothing in return. That's what he told her. This world is messed up. And it can mess you up. I was lucky. I had somebody that helped me. Did you come here to help me? You can't. No one can. Not every stain comes out. Can we get her out, lads? What is it? That's bad news. What oh, fucking asteroid is it? Oh shit! Oh fuck off. Shut the fuck up and listen to me. It wasn't a rogue asteroid strike. It was an attack. An attack! 
Give me a goddamn list of every person on Luna with a direct line of communication to Fleet Command. Fuck! Oh, God! We were right! Christian. What? The second rock just hit Earth. Where? Where? America. About 40 kilometers northwest of Philadelphia. Oh, no. And we've lost communication with New York. No! We can't see the rocks. They don't know why. We have to get through to the Secretary General herself. Tell her directly what we know. Oh, we'll convince... We need to contact the UN one. Nancy, please. But I want relief drones around the clock in the air to resupply the first responders and make sure the UN aid and the Red Cross get anything they need. What the hell's going on with the asteroid spotters? The Planetary Defense Command says it's possible the entire Sentinel system's been hacked. Jesus. You no! Know. Motherfucker. I went to the academy with half the officers on that plane. Not even one of them will pick up. Come on! We've been blackballed by our whole goddamn staff. You fucking idiots. You fucking idiots. That's it. The staff. Ma'am, this is Chef Casey on UN1. I know who I fucking called. You fighting me up for years with macarons. <laughs> no. Nancy, you have to listen to me, please. God damn it. Just let her talk, you fucking amateurs. The rocks crashing down on Earth are covered in Martian stealth composites. That's why our spotters cannot see them. Why would Mars? It's not Mars. It's Marco and Aros. Yes! And I can prove it. But right now, you have to trust me. What do you recommend? The Watchtower satellites are the only thing we have that can penetrate stealth. You have to link them to the spotters. That's the best chance to destroy any more rocks that are on the way. Retask the Watchtowers and the Sentinels. Just do it. Fuck me! Thank you. You may have just saved millions. That's all that matters. <sighs> I've always admired your persistence. I prefer to think of it as perseverance. I'll bet you do. Oh no! Ma'am, get down! Oh no, 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 no! about that. Fuck. <sighs> oh, I hate Marco fucking in our ass. Come on. Zmia, you have not been authorized to slow. Please stay on your designated approach. What the fuck? Zmia, acknowledge. What's going on? Jesus Christ. Something's wrong. What is happening? Why is it opening in a fucking sp What is going on? Get everyone out of there now, it's a trap! Go, 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 go! They should never have been in that fucking thing in the first place. Oh, shit. They're firing at us! What the shit? Get him the gravity. 
It's like fucking Hydra. We have been done. She's still alive, grab her. This bitch. Too bad. So sad. It's gone. Go for good. Bye bye. Kick you in the face. You lose. You all lose. Who wins? <laughs> Is he dead? <laughs> he deserved to finish what he was building. Oh, Marco! Need a minute. Pause. Just need a minute. <laughs> I love Fred Johnson. I hate that it was fucking whatever her name is, Sake. That was a plot twist. I did not, I did not see that coming. But that has got to be Marco because that was some fucking bullshit. <clears throat> pissed. A few moments later. Okay, I've sorted myself out a bit. So, what I hope is that at least Amos and Clarissa can get their way out of the prison at Chesapeake because of the the um, asteroid attack. Maybe there's a way out for them, which otherwise couldn't have happened. It'd be nice to have Clarissa back part of our team again. She'd make a great outlaw. And, you know, after, after the way she saved the whole fucking world, I'm team Clarissa now. I hate that she's in that little city. It's horrible. So I hope, fingers crossed, she can get away, do something brilliant, get a p permanent pardon from Avasarala, who will be reinstalled as Secretary General. Da -da. But we are really fucked now. I did not think that that plane was going to go down, Nancy Go's plane. So that's basically her whole team, the UN Secretary General, Chief of Staff, you know, it will be... I'm assuming she'll have a vice, you know, a deputy... Um, you know, because Erin Wright used to have that position, so we know that exists. Um, who is that? And, you know, I'm assuming that they're going to maybe be more, more willing to lean on Avasarala's knowledge. Um, you know, does Avasarala get a role here somehow with a kind of 
I was going to say a national unity government, but it's more than that. It's an international unity government, um, you know, based on her experience, um, but also based on on the amount of knowledge that she has now. This is big. I mean, this is fucking big. They've taken out Earth. I. They've just managed to get. They've already got quarters. Are now I understand they didn't have because that was the Dawes Johnson play, wasn't it? You know, one of us has quarters. One of us has the scientist. One of us has has the protein molecule well the protein molecule is under fred's floor um so they launched this attack on tycho in order to retrieve that i honestly thought monica was going to be on the other side of this it's really that was some genius because i did not for a fucking second suspect um sake or whatever her name is at all uh i thought she was dead sweet and lovely and that has pissed me right off so yeah let's what else is going to happen in this fucking episode? Vastorada going to get hit by an asteroid? Jesus. Play. Here, are we turning around in the watchtowers now? 